I gravitated to Islam because Islam tells me that this life has meaning, that the, the struggles and the trials and the tribulations that you go through, they mean something if you handle them patiently and if you put all of your reliance upon God Almighty as the Creator, then you will be rewarded for it from the Creator. God has told us through Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, that if you remember God in times of ease, then God will remember you in times of struggle. So Islam codifies the way of life, the walk towards God, to bring remembrance of the Creator into your life at all moments. Every moment in your life has meaning. This is what Islam tells us. Every moment of your life has some sort of meaning and is a test for you. And what are you going to do with it? It's easy to believe that somebody else has just come and sacrificed seven hours of, of, of physical pain that actually other human beings have exemplified and done. And it's easy for us to say that the death, that the, that the killing of an innocent was a requirement of God Almighty that this act of evil was a requirement of God Almighty. It's easy. That's an easy route. Because then our walk really doesn't matter. It doesn't really matter. I can just say, say I believe this, and then I can go and walk in whatever direction I, I want to. You have to have a firm belief in what your belief is. So to know what direction you're walking in, you have to. You have to have a definitive understanding of where you're going. So you have to know that God Almighty is the creator of all the universe, the creator of everything. So he is not, as some people say, he is not inside everything. We would love to think he, it's a nice fluffy thought to say he's inside everything. If it's good, it would be nice. But can you say God Almighty is inside an atomic bomb that's killed thousands of, of little babies and burnt little babies? Can you say God was in that? Can you say that God actually required the killing of an innocent as the path, as the way that we much must walk? I don't want to walk in that path. I'm sorry. I believe my life has, has a personal responsibility. And I am responsible because I love God to try to walk in a path that He loves. And His path that He says He loves is the path that says, Thou shalt not kill an innocent. The path that requires you to kill an innocent to reach His salvation. I don't know. That just... That's not the message that's been sent to us from all the prophets. That message was changed somewhere, and you owe it to yourself to investigate it. Find out how did that message change? Who changed it? Who took the teachings of Jesus and said, it's not the actions, it's not the love of God and, and, and to try to do righteous deeds that saves you. It's that the, you must then sacrifice an innocent to do that. You spend... We spend, we all spend, we all spend more time, of course, just shopping around. Christmas is coming. This is another thing that we have to look at, is what's pleasing to God Almighty. Do you truly believe in a creator? If you don't, well, look around you and, 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 and come to a real, realization that everything has purpose. And your life has purpose. Every moment has purpose. If it doesn't have purpose, why do we struggle? There's pretty rough times in life. Why do we struggle through it? There must be something that keeps us going. There's been times where really, I've said to myself, why, why, why? This is, this is really hard. What keeps us going? What's this drive that keeps us going? If you look at it from an evolutionary standpoint as well, if you believe tr truly uh, in the evolutionary theory, uh, why? Have we been in evolutionary development per se? Why, why have we evolved so weak? Why do we require 10 hours of sleep a night? See, this is a sign of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as well because in Islam we believe every night we're, we're given, uh, given a sign of a, of a small death. We live, we live because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, has given us this life and that He will resurrect us. So in the morning, we're, we're resurrected again. Every morning you wake up, it's another chance, another, another day. What are you going to do with it? But why have we evolved then, if you believe in that, to require 10 hours of sleep per day? It's a very weak position to be in. From an from a, from a animal standpoint, the act of sleep is a very, very weak position to be in. If you truly believe that animals have evolved to become the strongest 
then wouldn't you assume that the animals that required the least amount of sleep would have then have become the greater of the population? Wouldn't it be a, an advantage to, to sleep less? Because when you're asleep, you're, you're open to predators. And uh, it's a very, very, very weak position to be in sleep. So I can't believe after billions and billions and billions of years that, that we still require 10 hours of sleep, if, if you truly believe in the evolutionary theory. But Allah has shown us in our sleep a sign if we reflect. Because when you're asleep, you have no idea of, of the actual reality Reality is, in one sense, it's given to us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a test. And when you're asleep, you'll go into another reality and you can't control it. You can't control it. And really, what can you control of this reality? You can control your reactions to, to what happens. But all, all reliance is upon God. And there is no power or strength except from God. And who is to protect you if God deems you some harm to befall you? And who can harm you if God decides no harm shall be put upon you? As God is the creator of this existence that we're in. So Islam tells us that we all have an individual responsibility. And it actually verifies the truths in the previous scriptures. Although they've been changed, just ask yourself this. How can the path to salvation be that of having a requirement to break one of the first laws of the creator? How can you reach the Creator by breaking the laws of the Creator? Islam says that the only sin that God will not forgive is that of disbelief and association with Him. That it is extremely wrong to raise any of His creation to the level of Himself and it is extremely lo wrong to lower Himself down to the level of any of His creation. Therefore, by giving human attributes to God Almighty, certainly a horrible statement to say that he requires an evil act to become closer to him. This is my reflections, and thank you for listening. It was more or less a comparative religion talk of sorts. And uh, I meant no offense to anyone by it. It's just that sometimes things need to be said in certain context, because in God's eyes, that is the most wrong act we can do is to attribute any evil upon God Almighty. God Almighty is not evil. God Almighty does not require evil in us. God requires us to go beyond that. Know that God is all forgiving, most merciful. If you turn to Him, and this is simply the message of Islam, is just to turn to God and ask for forgiveness. There's no intermediaries in Islam. There's no priesthood in Islam. There's no one you need to go and talk to to say you did a sin. You keep it to yourself because you don't want to propagate the sin to other human beings. You don't want to let anybody else think it's okay. You just go to your creator directly. This is why you put your face down on the ground because your source of intellect is in your frontal lobe of your brain. You place it on the ground in the lowest, most humble form you can and you cry out to your creator and you ask for forgiveness. It's just you and the Creator, there's no one in between you because who would know you best than the one that created you?